Hey everybody, welcome to Slash Bash, where today I am bringing you another Choosing Bagger Reddit video. If you are new to the channel, push that subscribe button and join the family. In our first story, a Choosing Beggar shows her true colors when our OP won't let her vacation at their place. What pandemic? Let's jump right in. So my husband has friends, Barry and David. They're not important to this story though. Barry is married to my friend, and David is married to Karen. Now I understand trying to enter into a set dynamic and insert yourself into a clique as the new kid is hard. I worked very hard to be as welcoming as possible, but something about Karen rubbed us wrong. Was it the fact that she was not working or going to school and had asked, demanded that David buy her a car, find a bigger house for them to live in, pay for fertility treatments, and pay for a wedding all in the first six months of them dating? Yes, but also she wore a white dress to my wedding, rude, and tries to sell us It Works all the flipping time. But the piece de resistance was this interaction. Keep in mind this is the first time Karen has called me outside of asking if I want to join her down line. Hey, y'all have a guest room, right? Well, it's more like a big closet for my cosplay stuff that also has a pull-out couch in it, lol. Why? David and I are coming to Tennessee for a two-week vacation and to go to my family reunion, but there aren't any hotels in our budget, so I figured we could stay with y'all. Oh, well, unfortunately, I'm gonna have to say no. Like I said, it's more a closet than anything, but also, since the social distance order is still in place, I can't condone a large group of people getting together like that. I'm sorry, but maybe it's best you stay in South Carolina. No, it's fine. No one in my family has the virus. Also, you can just move your costumes to your own room, right? You'll have to buy a real bed though, since we are trying for a baby. Or you can take the guest room and David and I will stay in y'alls. No. Even if no one has obvious symptoms, they may still be carrying the virus. My sister is pregnant and my mother has an autoimmune disorder and I'm not taking any risk of this thing getting to them. Two, my cosplay stuff is in the room because it's the only storage space we have. I'm not shoving it into my bedroom where it won't fit. Three, we can't afford a new bed or there would be one in the guest room already. And four, you are not having sex in my bed, ever. What the flip? Well, I see how it is. You know, I told David you were a selfish two-faced witch, but he swore Barry wouldn't be with someone like that. Obviously, they're both wrong. I'm going to tell David about this, and when he tells Barry, you'll be in for a rude awakening. I hope he takes you to hand and shows you what a witch you've been, and teaches you how to act properly. Now, I've been taken to hand by two partners in the past, and I'm still dealing with PTSD from it, which she knows. Did, did you really just flipping imply you hope my husband hits me? Because I won't let you stay at our house and put us and our family at potential risk? I'm just saying that a real lady wouldn't act so stuck up, and that someone needs to teach you a lesson. Holy flip! What is this, 1820? You're psychotic. I'm going to tell him all of this so that when your husband calls to complain, he'll have the full flipping story, you crazy butt. I'm going to block you now. Kindly flip off forever. I knew you were a heartless blank. You never do anything for anyone. You couldn't even support my business venture and probably laughed with your friend when I had to stop selling my products because of people like you telling everyone my products are toxic flip you. So that's my tale of woe, or bafflement at least. My husband had to hold me down because I was shaking so bad from the anger, but it's been like a week and honestly, I'm just amazed. This witch really told me that she would be staying in my home so she could ignore quarantine and meet up with a bunch of people, demand I adjust my life to suit hers, tell me she was going to have sex in my bed, and then wish my husband abused me. JFC. On the bright side, my friend and I did laugh about her failed multi-level marketing scheme and the fight she and her husband got into when mine called saying Karen triggered my PTSD. I'm petty and she can get flipped. 
Story 2 shows us a choosing beggar mother who is not happy with the pool chosen for the pool party. Who cares that all the public pools are closed? I am paraphrasing a chain of emails here. The necessary background information is that my family is a member of a small non-profit social club. Jill, my mom, has a pool in her backyard. Meg is the woman in charge of the organization's children's group, which consists of about 20 kids from age 3 to 13. Kathy is one of the moms and she has two kids who are 4 and 6 years old. Let's start with Meg's email to all the children's moms, including Jill. Hi everyone, I hope you're all doing well and staying safe at home. I have some good news. Although we will not be able to have our annual pool party at the town aquatic center due to the facility being closed for the season, we might still be able to have a pool party. Jill has graciously offered to let us use the pool in her backyard. This pool party is tentatively scheduled for late July, but is subject to change based on CDC recommendations. I will keep you posted with more information. Kathy's reply. Hi, Meg and Jill. Does Jill's pool have zero depth entry? My kids are scared of deep water. Hi, Kathy. We don't have a zero depth entry, but we do have stairs leading into the shallow side of the pool. The shallow half of the pool is about three feet deep. Your six-year-old will most likely be able to stand and walk around in it, but your four-year-old will probably need a life vest. Meg, Jill's pool really isn't going to work for us. It's not zero depth, so it will probably be very scary for the younger kids. Could you please try to find a pool that has more options for the little ones? Kathy, no one has a zero depth pool in their backyard, and the public pools are all closed for the season. I'm sorry you'd prefer an alternative, but there is no alternative. I think this party is still going to be a lot of fun for the kids, even if it's not exactly what we had originally planned. Wow, you really only care about the older kids, don't you? This is such a slap in the face to those of us who have little ones. Thanks for showing us your true colors, I guess. What I love is when somebody loses their mind over a problem that can be solved with a little wading pool in the backyard that you blow up, or maybe even a sprinkler. In story three, we have a choosing beggar who doesn't want to pay to have her vehicle checked out. I've worked in the customer service business a long time, so I've got a lot of choosing beggar stories, and I have been reading these and listening to r slash a lot lately, so I figured I'd finally post one for my current job. So for context, I work for a call center for a bunch of dealerships. We basically do scheduling for services and get pricing and general information for customers so the advisors that are actually at the dealership can help the customers already there. Basically glorified receptionists. I get a lot of people who feel they are entitled to a lot more than they actually are or people who just generally don't like the costs of fixing their cars. So I have a lot of stories, but here are two that stick out. So I take a call, give the general greeting. Choosing beggar starts off pretty normal, just needs an oil change. We get through the exchange pretty easily and then she asks for the price. So semi is X while full synthetic is X. So it depends on what you normally use. I should add there is normally conventional oil, but this dealership didn't offer it any longer. A lot of places don't. Choosing beggar sort of screeches, what? I don't remember ever paying that much. I'm sure she's lying, but I check her history anyway. Maybe she was getting conventional when it was still around. Nope. Previous charges seem to be around what we charge for semi except for one a few visits back, which was probably because she complained. Well, there could have been a special or your advisor gave you a discount, but these are the prices that they usually have. I'm sorry. Choosing beggar sounded like she was starting to cry. Well, can't you give me another discount? I can't really afford that, please? I'm sorry, I do not have the authority to give discounts at all. I really just do the scheduling. You can always talk to your advisor when you come in, but I can't promise they will. It'll probably be this price. Seriously, I come there all the time. Isn't there any discount you could offer me? I mean, I've gotten one before. So we did have a discount, however, it was buy two, get one free, basically, but it's like over $100 up front. 
Well, we do have one. You pay X and get three over the course of two years. Basically, buy two, get one free. That is not a discount! I just told you I couldn't even afford the previous prices. What makes you think that would help? Please, I really need some help. Can't you ask someone? I'm really sorry. That is the best we have. I really am not authorized to change the price at all. You can talk to someone when and if you come in. So did you want to get scheduled or not? Fine! Yes, let's just set it up. I need to get this done. We got through it all, and at the end, if I didn't have to say it, I wouldn't have. Is there anything else I can help you with? Well, my car is actually making a weird noise. Can you have them check that out too? Which basically throws everything off because that's a heavy line service, which means it would affect the time we set and mess the whole appointment up. Plus, there is a diagnostic fee. I explained that to her and that it would cost like $150 for a diagnosis. Choosing beggar starts to cry again. Why? It's already in there. Can't you just look at it and tell me what's wrong? You guys don't care at all about your customers. You just care about the money. I apologize, but it's usually not something they can just look at. It takes time to diagnose issues. Choosing beggar is now full on crying, like not just kind of crying. But my car is going to break down if it's not fixed. Why can't you guys just help someone without taking money? That's all you guys care about. You really don't care about your customers at all. I mean, you can try and ask them. She cuts me off. No, I won't ask them because they will just tell me they need $250 to just tell me what is wrong with it. You guys are so mean. You never want to help your customers. Whatever. If my car breaks down, it's your fault. And she hung up. Like, I understand dealerships are expensive, but it wasn't like her car was new or anything, so going somewhere else wasn't going to mess up her warranty or something. And like, yeah, my guys taking an hour or more of their time need to get paid for the work they do. If I wouldn't have gotten in trouble, I would have suggested for her to go somewhere else that's cheaper instead of trying to get name brand dealership service for off-brand pricing. In our final story, a choosing beggar who thinks the way to a discount is to threaten a bad review. Hey man, could you do $25 shipped? Cheers. I'll do 30 shipped. Sorry, 25 is the highest I can go. Cheers. No worries. Please? I want to get this for my birthday. It's 30. Surely you can wiggle down $5. But my budget is low. I will give you a positive review if you can do 25 shipped. I've listed it for 30 and I'm shipping it to you for free. Take it or leave it. I mean, surely you don't want a bad rating on your profile page. Come on, man, it's $5, just wiggle down. Is that a threat? Do me a favor, threat? No threat, I'm just saying, <laughs> lol. Please, could you just round it down and let it go for $25? Please? It's 30. Just, I'm writing your review right now. Up to you. Bruh, I don't give a flip. It's 30, take it or flip off. Do you think you can just go around and threaten people to lower their price? Otherwise, you'll give them a bad review? Grow up, you little blank. That's right, we don't negotiate with terrorists. This has been John from Slash Bash. Thanks for watching! If you've enjoyed the video and want to see more of them, hit that subscribe button. We'd love for you to drop a like, share it with your friends, and we'll see you in the next one.